Welcome back, everybody, to The Financier. I'm your host, Vijara Kohli. Today, we're going to talk about Jerome Powell, what he said on 60 Minutes last night, some of the highlights, the topics that he mentioned, what was of interest to him, what I think will be of interest to the audience. Uh, I'm going to talk about some of the key takeaways that I learned, uh, maybe what, what the future may entail. There are not too many surprises, so that's great. I think he does a pretty good fair chairman. He does a very good job. He's very consistent with his messaging. Uh, he's very understanding, which I think is the most important piece that I think a lot of people uh, overlook when in the, you're in such a powerful role, you have to undertake so many different market dynamics. You have to have a good understanding of the macro, uh, politics, microeconomics, what's happening in business. So it's it's definitely a tough job. Uh, I, I have to give him a lot of credit. I always appreciate that his, he's very consistent in his messaging across the board. Um, even with you know when the president and other people in in Congress and politics would talk about him and what he's doing, right or wrong, there are a lot of ways to be influenced um, negatively, positively. So it's it's I, I I love that. I love seeing that. I love seeing everyone that heads each of the Federal Reserve circuits across the country. It's pretty exciting um, that we're, they're doing such a terrific job. It's hard uh, hard to remember it even now. It's been a year that they did such a drastic move last April and March to raise trillions of dollars to really lower interest rates. They, they didn't wait at all. They made the fastest decisions they could. Um, they were very big decisions. Uh, we may pay for them down the road, but without further ado, let's go into what happened yesterday on 60 Minutes so we can learn more about what this great man talked about last night. Um, so first up was our turnaround growth. This has been a very positive factor for everyone in the economy. It's uh, been very clear that things have been picking back up. Um, uh, there are certain cities that have definitely opened up 100%, certain states that are up open 100%. So we're seeing this across the board. Um, it's good news. Uh, I think a lot of people, a lot of executives, a lot of people in these positions are pretty surprised that we've recovered so quickly, which is very positive for the entire economy. Um, in some ways, it's been faster than expected. Uh, the capital um, that was given, stimulus, loans, grants, everything that was deployed definitely helped recover that. Um, the funding for the vaccine development definitely helped recover, speedy recovery. So he talked about that he expects a quicker turnaround. He didn't pro provide any dates, but he did mention that this was a very, this is positive news. Everything that's happening, he would be a, uh, he would keep an alarm or you know a red flag on on states that are maybe opening too quickly without the vaccines rolling out. If you got thoughts about where you live or where you are, I'd love to hear your thoughts about what you thought, uh, what you're thinking about in your local economies. If there's a there's there's some concerns, there's too much openness, not a lot of like mask restrictions, compliance regulations taking place by your local governments. Let me know. Uh, so he mentioned that he thinks we'll uh, get to a, a certain inflection point at a period of time. He's not aware yet, but he, he's really very excited about what's going to happen in the economy. Um, it's very positive. He doesn't see a need to raise rates in the near term. Um, he sees economic growth happening. Um, the same thing Jamie Dimon mentioned on his letter in the last Wednesday, Thursday, that he sees growth taking place for the next two years. Uh, Jerome also mentioned that he expects the rates to be low for the next two years. So those that combination is definitely going to boost um, the markets for the go, uh, for the near term. So it's uh, they don't see any uh, concerns, you know, of inflation. A lot of things that you read about in the news, you can hear this guy saying it. We expect to see growth. It's going to be very promising for the next two years. Um, he put a lot more emphasis that fiscal policy is the critical. Thing on the agenda right now. They've exhausted, not exhausted, he didn't say that, but they've exhausted a lot of their monetary policy uh, abilities. So they're waiting on fiscal policy to help boost uh, employment, jobs, manufacturing, investments. The infrastructure plan is a big piece of what's going to happen next in the economy. Um, so it's pretty cool to hear that. And it's important to note that they did ask him this on 60 Minutes yesterday about the uh, transition or the popularity of cryptocurrencies, digital assets, new uh, stable coins, the whole nine, whether they're looking at it. Jerome did mention that they are looking into it pretty heavily. 
Um, it's on their agenda, both uh, at different levels. So they have software teams developing different test cases for digital dollars at the federal level. Um, at both uh, at the local circuit levels, they have other people testing different ways of applying these methodologies. They're talking with a lot of uh, counterparties and central banks across the world about how they can apply these technologies to make the entire um, the entire economy even more efficient than it already is. Uh, but they did mention that it's important that they don't need to be first, the United States. They do need to be right. So we are still, he said, that we're still the reserve currency in the world. And it's important that we do this correctly, um, that we do this correctly. And we'll say, okay, what's what's the scenario um, of digital assets? We kind of set the standard and, and the, the gold standard for what's happening in the world, even though it's a, a digital. So yeah, Raj, I'll, I'll get to Coinbase. Um, I did I did do a video on this, so you can check it up on either LinkedIn or on YouTube about the Coinbase IPO. Uh, I talked about the offering. It's happening on a Wednesday, the 14th, so you'll find out more about the release. It looks like it's going to be a very big, successful IPO. Uh, uh, you can look more into it. If you have any specific questions, um, I, did, I did release a letter, and um, I did a video publishing uh, covering the entire IPO. Uh, so the digital assets uh, for the United States, it's on their agenda. I don't think they'll do anything. I think it'll be a very uh, long roadmap. It will probably take another five to 10 years before we start moving the needle here. He was not concerned about what Peter Thiel mentioned about um, China using it as a weapon against other currency, other countries with major currencies. Uh, um, he did mention that it's important to look into it because there's so much activity happening. But the, the, the countermeasure to it is that it's simply Bitcoin and other crypto assets are so minute compared to the dollar transaction volume per day and the funding that happens every single day in the banking system. It's just those, those assets are so tiny in comparison to what's happening in the real world with real dollars and credit that it, it doesn't make sense to the system's not broken. They're just looking for ways to improve it. So he mentioned that. I think that's the right point. Uh, and it's good that they're looking into it. Um, I think it'll take 10 years. I'm not going to bet on the uh, Federal Reserve or the U.S. doing anything drastic here. It's just it's too critical to our infrastructure to make a to make a move overnight on. So he mentioned two things uh, investment related that I'll that I'll refer to. One is that there's a lot of concerns with the money market funds. This, if you don't recall, in 2007, 2008, when Lehman Brothers went bankrupt and uh, Bear Stearns was uh, shuttering. There was a big concern in the commercial paper markets when the liquidity dried up for short-term um, fixed income instruments. So money market funds are relatively liquid, but the investments in these in these instruments uh, still have to be sold in order to provide that liquidity. So the problem with the Lehman Brothers period was that they uh, they broke the buck. So you know your twenty five thousand dollar investment would be less worth less uh, minus the returns. So he mentioned there's there's still some real constraints in this area. Last year, when there was a lot of liquidity concerns and funding requirements, um, there was still there was a possibility there was going to be some capital challenges here. So he said this is just a systematic problem. They haven't figured out how to solve it. Uh, it I don't think they'll be able to figure out how to solve it. It's a very tricky instrument. Money market funds aren't CDs or savings accounts or bonds. They're invested in other types of assets that are more risky and they're not liquid. So when people invest in this and then they withdraw against it, sell and withdraw against it, there's always gonna be a run on the bank in some fashion. The, the, the only thing that we've solved over the few, last few years is that more people are investing in them. So we have access to more liquidity, but it's simply not enough if everybody is selling it at the same time. And then last but not least, he also mentioned a note on Archaos that I talked about a few weeks ago, that the family office that blew up this guy lost uh, $20 billion over the matter of a couple of days because of some uh, over levered positions. He just mentioned that it's not the federal reserves, you know, focus point. That's more the sec and FINRA and that these risk management issues are common that um, it's, it's not, not a surprise that this is happening, but these investment banks are aware this guy happened to just get away with, uh, telling different prime brokers about how he can over lever 
at the end of the day, this is a risk management issue. It's not, um, you know, a monetary policy issue. It's a very uh, one-off, you know, standard deviation problem, but it can be overcome. Um, this will happen again in the future. There's no way to really backstop it. And it's simply not the Federal Reserve's problem. Um, there are other entities and other regulatory bodies that can focus on this and they will fix this because it is a problem for some people that own those stocks that get oversold or vice versa. So that wraps up his uh, his coverage. I thought it was great. I thought he covered a lot of material in a very short period of time. I think it was like 10 minutes. It was, uh, it was awesome. I love doing this type of coverage. So if you have any more comments or questions, I always feel free. I'm seeing everything on Twitter, LinkedIn, Quora. I post a lot more on YouTube. So you can re-watch these videos. You can watch the old ones online as well. So if you got any more comments, questions, you can always follow, like, and subscribe on all my socials and just catch up with me offline. Um, I'll do another video tomorrow and a few more this week. So I look forward to catching up with everybody very soon. Until then, I'll see you guys later. Take care.